Greetings, citizens. It is your Jesse Stiles, co-director of Exploded Ensemble, the experimental music research wing of Carnegie Mellon University. And today we are going to make a max patch that is going to remove the background behind us on a camera image and put inside of that empty space a visualization of whatever sounds we are putting into a microphone. Let's do this. So I got inspired to do this uh, from using Zoom, the video conferencing application, because Zoom is how we're doing all our music making and teaching right now because of the global frickin' pandemic. So Zoom has this cool feature called virtual background where it somehow analyzes like what's in the background behind us and replaces it with some image. So how do they do this? How do they like figure out what is the background and what is you? I don't really know, but we're gonna do some version of this in Max. Okay, here we are in Max. We're gonna make a new patcher. Um, Cycling 74, uh, the good people who make Max, by the way, they gave us a bunch of short-term licenses to get us through this time period where we can't teach classes. Um, on campus, so that was really chill of them. Uh, thanks, Cycling74. That was a cool thing to do. Okay, I'm gonna make my text things a little bigger so you can see them. We're gonna make a jit.world. We're gonna give it a name, I'm gonna call it hello, and I'm gonna go ahead and enable this world with the enable attribute and I'm going to make it float. Boom, floating world. Let's kind of resize it and just stick it in the corner here. And now let's get our camera to go into this world. So I'm going to type grab and then I'll use the auto completer for jit.grab. That's the object that can open our camera. And we're going to send it this message open and let's just add a close message if we want to close it. <clears throat> so if we lock the patch, click on open. Hey, great, there's our camera. So we want to remove all the background stuff inside this image. So as I mentioned, I don't really know how Zoom does it with their algorithm. This is just like the approach that makes sense to me. So the biggest difference between me and the room is that I'm moving around, the room is sitting still. So I figure we can just take the parts of the image that don't move and subtract them out. So let's just look at like a real quick and dirty approach to doing that. I'm gonna make a JIT dot gen object to do efficient math on my jitter matrices. Oh, and I'm going to add one attribute to my camera, unique. I'm going to set unique to one, and that's going to decrease the frame rate so we only get new frames. And I need to reopen the camera, having done that. Okay. So we can double click jit.gen. It takes two matrices and just adds them together. So we could take our camera signal and go boop, boop, look at the output and it's the same thing, but now it's brighter because we're just adding it to itself. All right, what if we subtracted it? Look at that, the image minus itself gives us nothing. But what if we just do a little um, output timing? We're gonna take the name of our matrix and we're gonna do a boom, boom. Okay, so what you can see faintly here now is the difference between this frame and the last frame. This trigger object outputs the name of the matrix in a specific order where it's right to left. So this triggers the output and then it stores that matrix in the right inlet and then the next frame is gonna give us the difference. So it's the 
uh, previous frame minus the current frame. And it might actually make more sense for us instead of to do uh, subtraction to do the absolute difference. Okay, so there's the absolute difference between this frame and the previous frame. You can see there's still color involved. If we want to make this more efficient, let's do this math on a grayscale version of the image. So I'm going to do RGB to Luma on it. Okay, same thing, but grayscale, there's less math involved, it's more efficient. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this grayscale output that shows me where motion is happening and I'm gonna use this as a gate to pass through the color image in those areas where motion occurs. So this JIT.gen is generating a grayscale matrix. Uh, I'm gonna eventually want color matrix. So let's just make a brand new fresh JIT.gen. I'm gonna take my color image from grab. That's gonna make sure this JIT.gen gives me a color output. And then I can take this grayscale output and JIT.gen, remember by default, it adds things together. So if we open it up, let's make it multiply these things. Okay, so now we're multiplying and all the sections that are black are just getting zeroed out. <clears throat> I'm gonna take, actually let's do this back here. In this JIT.gen, I'm getting a kind of full grayscale value. Let's make it binary. So I'm gonna do a greater than, and I'll use this value, 0.05. Okay, so now, um, the output of this JIT.gen is basically black or white. If it's zero or one, if it's greater than or less than this value. Uh, and so it's really letting through the color better in this section of the image where there's motion. Uh, it's got this kind of weird sparkly effect because I'm getting a good frame rate out of this. Um, I think this will look a little smoother if we make it smoother, right? Yes, that makes sense. So I'm gonna use jit.slide and I'm gonna set the slide down attribute here to some stupidly large value. And let's just boop the signal through there. Hey, okay. So that jit.slide is taking my binary motion gate output and it's really, um, it's adding a long trail on the output of it. So it's smoothing all the downward changes in those values by this stupidly large value that I specified. Mm, let's see, what if I just said 1000? Okay, that's kind of a thing. It's kind of erasing my background and allowing the sections where motion comes through uh, about 100. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so it takes a couple seconds, but it eventually decides on uh, what the background is. Cool, all right, so that's step one. That's my background erasing algorithm. Uh, does it work as good as the one that they have in Zoom? Um, it works better. Yeah. Okay, so step one complete. We've erased the background of our camera, and now we wanna get some visualization of our microphone and get it in there behind us. So our microphone input, we're gonna get that with a good old AVC object. Let's just double check that we're actually getting sounds through this microphone. Yes, I am. If you are not, you can double click your ADC and double check your input device is what you think it is. And of course, double check that you've actually turned audio on using this power button or this power button or other means at your disposal for turning audio on. Make sure you turned audio on. Okay, so to generate this visualization, we're gonna use a JIT 
dot catch tilde. <clears throat> We're gonna run the audio signal into that. And jit dot catch tilde, it needs bangs in order to produce output. We're getting bangs from jit dot world down here. There's the render draw bang. So let's just add a send object and a receive object to get those bangs up here. And then to graph this matrix coming from the microphone, we're gonna use, what do you call it? The, the jit.gl.graph, that thing. Okay, hey, yeah, it's just that easy. Look at that, there's a sweet, sweet waveform. It's somewhat integrated with my face. I erased the background of my room, more or less. Uh, we could play around with the color of uh, this graph that we're generating. Let's look at the attributes. Doop, 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 doop. You would think there would be an attribute named color. Is it this? Ox color? Do, do, do. No, that's not it. Mm, color, how about that? Uh, let's make a, yeah, all right. There is a sweet, sweet red waveform and that's what's coming off of my microphone and it's fully integrated into my version of um, a Zoom virtual background. Um, so here's our end result. You can see me, you can see what's coming out of my microphone. Uh, so Exploded Ensemble, our experimental music group at Carnegie Mellon University, we're gonna be using this when we do our network performances so that we can see each other, we can see our gestures, uh, but we can also see that like indeed, the members of the ensemble are sending audio signals into the network. Okay, that's it. Uh, if you have a better idea of how to do this, um, please let us know. Uh, put a link in the comments to uh, your approach to this uh, basic idea of creating a virtual background. Uh, there is a link to the patch that we made in the description of this video.